All right, Jim, the board is green. Okie doke. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming this evening. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you'll tell your friends and uh, so they can join us also. Uh, I've got that. Uh, hello? I'm here. There you go. There you go. go ahead. Uh, one of the things I'd like to, uh, to say again, if you have any ideas or suggestions of how we need to improve these meetings, let me know. Uh, because it's ridiculous in my mind that we're not getting more people that uh, want to participate in our meetings. I think our meetings have been first class. We're doing everything we can to get you really top notch first class modelers here. And uh, for people not to show up and not to want to participate in this is beyond me. I, I just can't understand. So anything that you can do to help or with ideas or suggestions, Dylan, if you'll put up my email so they can send me an email, I, I sure would appreciate it. I'm on it. I'll put it in the chat momentarily. I just got to drag and drop it. Also, guys, I, we're going to try to start something new tonight. Uh, there's a chat uh, capability on the Zoom. And if you'll tell us your name, the scale you model, uh, and send us your email, then we'll start sending you direct emails for all the future Zooms that we have. And over time, we're hoping to build an email list where you know we're not you don't have to necessarily uh, go to my page or or try to figure out when when the next one is. We'll send you an email every time to uh, to do it. So if you can do that on chat, then Dylan can pick them up, and we'll start developing our email list and be able to know who's watching us and who wants to be a part of uh, part of our shows. Uh, and we hope that's going to be beneficial to everybody. Uh, tonight, we've got a great modeler, uh, Tim Gilman. Uh, and Dylan, I will let you uh, introduce uh, Tim and talk about him a little bit, and then we'll turn it over to him to uh, tell us uh, his great modeling and show us his layout. Well, I've known Tim for a while. Um, met him through Dan Bigda, who we have had on here with us. Um, Tim is an HO scale guy, and he is probably one of the best modelers I know. Um, that Don't get me wrong, I know a lot of very good modelers, but Tim is very good. He can make a scene and he can make it come alive. <laughs> he just probably has me do the wiring for the lights. <laughs> but um, he's uh, basically a steam era modeler in HO scale, modeling the Boston and Albany connecting railroad. Um, and Tim would probably be the best person to explain the idea behind that, but it's basically steam era, just a, you know, shelf layout, but to say that Tim basically finds a way to stuff detail in and find space for detail when there's already something very heavily detailed is probably an understatement. He's very good at it. So Tim, why don't you tell us about who you are? Sure, sure. Uh, anyways, uh, Dylan, thank you for inviting me to this forum. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, if I lose my voice out there, folks, um, I've been uh, the recipient of COVID-19, and uh, I was lucky that uh, I was able to come through it. Um, I get a little tired sometimes. I don't, I'm missing my right lung, so uh, I have one lung, so bear with me if I come up a little short. As you can see, I have a cannula on and I am on oxygen. I have a machine right here to my left. So uh, I get a little winded sometimes here. Um, I started modeling like a lot of you guys when I was a kid uh, with model railroads. My first uh, set was a O gauge. Uh, it was a Marx, um, I believe it was. Uh, my dad and mom got it out of the Western Auto. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was old gauge. And uh, I had that for about a year. And um, my dad went to a hobby shop in Worcester, Massachusetts, and uh, he saw H.O. Gage. So that Christmas, uh, I got myself my first um uh, ho gauge uh ac gilbert out of uh connecticut uh, i don't know if any of you remember them but uh they were in the uh, business of making trains for a few years 
And that uh, got my interest going. Uh, then as I became a teenager and stuff, an early adult, I wandered away from it. And uh, I uh, went to college. Uh, well, I went in the service first and then went to college and then uh, um, got married. And it uh, wasn't until I, after I was married, I got interested again. Uh, my son and my daughter didn't have an interest in it, but I did. So uh, I started just tinkering around with it a little bit. And then I just got busy. I ended up uh, working in, uh, an extra job uh, to make ends meet. So my wife didn't have to work as much as she decided at that time to go back and get her bachelor's degree. And so I just worked two jobs and I didn't have really enough time uh, to get into the hobby. Um, so uh, I took a hiatus for a number of years and it wasn't until uh, back in uh, early 2004, I got back into the hobby again. So for the past 16 years, uh, I've been at it full scale. I've had two layouts. Uh, the first one was a four by eight. And uh, I did so much detailing in it that I had no more room to detail. So uh, I... Uh, decided when when I moved I was gonna you know have a much larger uh, layout and I ended up uh, having a 12 by 12 room uh, all to myself and so I got started uh, and um, I primarily model between the years 1928 1942 uh, I do the Boston and Albany, but at that point they were really the New York Central. Uh, it's just that people uh, liked the old Boston and Albany and they liked the name. And uh, so it ended up being uh, Boston and Albany, New York Central uh, here in Massachusetts. Um, anyhow, uh, I remember when I was a kid, the tracks were right down the road from us, listening to the train switching at night. And it wasn't very, it was only like maybe uh, 400 yards from where I lived to the passenger station in town. And it uh, was called Depot Village. And the town I grew up in was known for seven railroads. Uh, and a friend of mine, Phil Opalowski, wrote a book about it. Uh, back in uh, early 2000, and uh, Phil passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, but he was a he was a hell of a train guy, and uh, he uh, he uh, had an S gauge uh, layout that he uh, had disassembled, but uh, he was getting ready to put it back together again. He kept talking about it. But Phil had his original HO gauge layout in Model Railroader in 1992. Uh, he was featured uh, in Model Railroader. And um, it was a beautiful layout. Uh, and Phil, uh, he uh, was into the modern era. Uh, he d didn't like steam. And me, on the other hand, uh, I love steam. Uh, I love working on the engines. Uh, I like keeping them going. Uh, I like the uh, maintenance that I have to do on it. Keeps me busy. Uh, keeps me out of Pauline's hair. So uh, anything I can do in that regards, I try my best to do it. And uh, she lets me pretty much have uh, complete reign of my downstairs uh, in the train room and everything like that. Uh, if uh, I'm really busy doing a project down there, She's even known to bring me down my breakfast, my lunch, or my dinner while I'm down there. So there's not really a lot of women out there that would do something like that. I don't want to sound sexist, but I'm just saying, you know. So um, anyways, uh, I, I uh, model uh, the steam era. And um, right into the beginning of the transition, because I do have one diesel. I have an AMD. Um, doodle bug and uh that's the only diesel i have uh the other uh 12 engines that i have uh are all uh, steam i don't have a, a big number uh of engines 
primarily because I like to put my uh, money into a lot of the building that I do. Uh, I am a follower of George Salios. I've seen uh, the Franklin South Manchester layout probably close to 20 times. Um, I do know George and his wife, Kathy, and uh, a lot of the detail that uh, I do, I uh, have gotten the ideas from George. I study his layout a lot. Uh, I always find that whenever I'm down there, I find something new. Um, excuse me? Am I to stop right now, or can you hear me? Sorry, oh, sorry, Tim. Okay. Um, no, it was just an echo. I don't oh. know where it came from. Okay. Do you, Do you want me to keep talking, or should, do yeah, you keep going? Echo? Keep okay. Going. Okay. Uh, well, I'll tell you. I'll I'll open it up if anybody wants to ask me any questions. I did send you some pictures. Um, why don't we actually start, oof. why don't we keep this going by actually, why don't I put some of those pictures up real quick? Okay. All right. You guys all see that? Wow. Yes. That's uh, one I just recently did. Uh, it was um, a tattoo parlor. I got it from Doug Foskill. <laughs> he uh, sent it as a freebie. And so uh, I put it together. And uh, that's what I came up with. Um, I use a lot of color. I do uh, primarily, my layout is in the fall. Um, I love New England colors, as you can see. Um, I have not only uh, a lot of trees with foliage on them, but I have a lot of birch without the leaves and uh, the yellow leaves on the ground around the birches. Uh, but this one here is a, a tattoo parlor. Very nice. Uh, it is elect it is electrified. I uh, electrify all my houses, all my buildings. Uh, I electrify. Um, I don't know what it is. I just have a thing for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, every building on Tim's layout is lit. I would know. I help wire them. <laughs> but but basically, <laughs> apply what Tim job, has done. Yeah. But basically, take what Tim has done here. And apply it to a whole layout. Seriously, I, I cannot begin to. I, I, my own words probably aren't selling it well enough. Like, seriously, Tim, as far as getting detail into a scene, Tim is one of the best people I know for it. But of course, we've got more pictures. <laughs> this here is uh, uh, this uh, trackside shanty. Uh, workman's shanty and um, I didn't really know what to do with the coal bed so I decided instead of having it open at the top I wanted to open it in the side and just protect the coal um, so that's what I did you'll also notice I have a gooseneck light and I have several of my buildings with uh, the gooseneck lights um, they're kind of hard to find now. Um, someone told me that uh, Walters is uh, no longer going to be carrying them. Uh, I don't know how true that is. They didn't say so to me, but um, I, that's what I heard, that they're not going to be carrying them anymore for HO or whatever other gauge out there uses them. This here is a uh, this is a bar mills crossing shanty, and I use a couple different mediums with the, my crossing shanty. Some of them I use the old green paint, 
And that's what they used to have back in the old days. And they were high in lead. Um, I was told the story why a lot of the buildings and window sashes and everything like that were green. Uh, and it was because of the, it was easier and cheaper to make green paint. Um, but this building here is white. And I also use a, a, a gray uh, primer as well uh, for a lot of my buildings. Uh, so between the green and the gray, uh, those are the two primary uh, mediums I use. This here is a, uh, it's just one of my crossings. Uh, I believe this one is right uh, in, yeah, it's on my siding uh, where the ice house is. Yeah, the ice house is to the right of the crossing. Uh, but um, over to the right is uh, the ice house. And uh, straight ahead is the, um, yeah, over to, oh, yeah, straight across the tracks and to the left uh, is my sanding station uh, that you can see. And that's a, a fine scale miniature uh, building. It's one of George's. You'll see it also on his layout. And you can also tell from the sanding tower. Now the, the background scenery uh, is on a blue wall. Uh, I painted the whole room blue, and my friend Gary LaCroix painted all the clouds along the whole setup, and Gary also helped me lay down the track uh, when I first started building this. And my friend, my friend Dan Bigda uh, built the trestle going across, and one of the main tables coming up the side, actually, that this scene is under. Uh, Dan built that for me uh, to connect it. Uh, and the background scenery uh, I got from a company out of Pennsylvania. Uh, the guy works out of his house and he sells sceneries. And uh, he threw together five fall sceneries. And what I did was I pieced them all together completely around the room. This is the bridge, of course. Yes. Uh, this bridge right here, uh, Dan Bigdom made for me. And uh, it comes into my entrance into the room. Uh, I don't think I sent you a picture of that, did I, Dylan? No, you didn't. No, I didn't. Deal, though. Yeah. Uh, but this bridge adds a lot of depth to the room. And it's one of the first things you see as you approach my train room, you see this. Now, this bridge over, it crosses over uh, a new setting called LaCroix Falls. And there's a fictitious waterfall on both sides of the bridge, um, giving it not only the depth, but uh, also it makes a mental picture for you. Uh, of the layout as you're coming into a body of water because as you approach the bridge you can see underneath that water coming out of uh, pipes uh, drain pipes going down into the ri river into the falls area All right. this here uh, this is another fast scale uh, building right here um, I bought this from Doug. Uh, I had a curiosity with it, and I, I really like his kits. I, I also like bar mills, but uh, and fine scales. But uh, Doug Foscale has really come a long ways uh, with his kits, and he builds a very good quality kit. Uh, easy to follow instructions, like bar mills. Um, and, uh, like I said, the kits are very interesting that he does put together. And you'll see up in the far right hand, oh, we're oh, oh sorry, let me go back. Okay. 
Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, uh, that crossing sign in the background, uh, that's a Canadian, uh, you see those up in Canada a lot of times. Uh, but there are a couple along the CD line uh, in Massachusetts, uh, up towards Leverett, Amherst and Leverett area. Uh, so I uh, bought some. Um, I think I got them from Titchy Trains. And I threw them in uh, along the back part of my layout. So as you look in the back part of my layout, you'll see uh, those crossing signs. On to the next one. Now you also notice that a lot of my vehicles, um, especially at this general store, are all vintage vehicles, um, 1920s, 30s, and some early 40s. Um, this one didn't come out all that great. Uh, it got manhandled. Um, by a four-year-old, but uh, it uh, survived and it made it so I could at least stick it someplace in the uh, layout where it wouldn't stick out too much. All right, and this is this is one of my recent ones. Um, this is uh, a Bar Mills kit, and it's a uh, Star Corner. Star Diner, and uh, it was very interesting to build. Uh, I got a couple really interesting ones. Uh, one of them is one I'm building right now downstairs, uh, which is the tower at Cranberry Yard, uh, which is a Bar Mills um, kit. And this here is also a Bar Mills, and um, it's a really interesting one to build because you working with a couple different mediums, not only wood, uh, but you also have plastic and you're also working with some resin base uh, product. So uh, building this was pretty interesting. I, I, like, I like to use a lot of ink. I don't know if folks notice when I'm doing my buildings, but I use a lot of ink uh, like George does uh i over i overdo it in some cases but i really believe it gives an added effect to the building itself and making it look old and vintage what kind of ink do you use how do you mix it or water yeah it I, use, I use indian ink and and 70 percent uh rubbing alcohol Okay. Uh, I use two parts ink to one part alcohol. Um, I use actually when I do the mixing, I, I use a small little um, I, I use a small little uh, bottle and um, I mix it that way. Um, I find it easier because I, I don't make large batches of them of uh, ink mixture. I do it very small bottles. I also have a um, another one that I'm using with shoe polish uh, and alcohol, and it works pretty good. It um, begins with an H. Uh, I had slipped my mind. Hillman's or something like that. Hunters, Hunters, and uh, it's their blue gray. Uh, it's a very good product. It's uh, it's a dark dark blue but when it comes out it comes out as a dark gray uh and it, you got to be careful when you're using it like any uh ink and alcohol you can't overdo it you got to make sure your bracing is is dry and it's in the places where it's supposed to be um i can't emphasize that enough uh with bracing to make sure you got enough of it uh, you're talking about hunter line probably yep yeah. Well, the Hunter Line makes a very good product. I mean, I, I like the, the colors that they have. Um, but the one that I, I use primarily is the blue gray. Tim, are there any tricks that you could pass on for your uh, use of the inks? Well, like I said, uh, you got to be careful. 
uh, I always start at the top and go to the bottom. Um, I do know someone that says that he starts in the middle or wherever. And I said, well, myself, I prefer to start at the top and work down. Um, I don't know. I think that's from being a painter when I was in college, realizing that you start at the top and paint down, you know, when we would be painting houses and stuff. You know, if you had a spill, it would be down below, you know, not up above. So uh, <laughs> that's what I do with, with putting on the inks. Now, something else I do. I make sure I have all my windows in. I don't put them in after. And I paint, all right? I, I ink right over my windows. They weren't really too big in washing their windows in the old days, you know? And uh, if you look at old pictures and stuff like that, uh, and George has mentioned this a number of times, that you'll see that things are kind of a little dirty and stuff like that, you know, uh, in the inner cities and stuff. And even though my scenario and my scenery design is primarily like town and country-ish, uh, eventually it'll look like a small city. Uh, if I get to live a number of more years, you know. <laughs> God <laughs> will. <laughs> you know, you got to stay away from those uh, viruses going around, though. They take a lot out of you. Uh, Tim, you, you mentioned bracing. Could you talk about bracing a little bit? What, yep. What uh, do you mean? When, when, you know, I, I think we all do basic bracing, but it sounds like you really, uh, you maybe go the extra bit as far as bracing is concerned? Sometimes I do. Um, when I look at something, if I have a feeling that there might be a little weakness there, especially over with time, these buildings take on their own character. Um, being inside, they're susceptible to drying, more drying, uh, especially in the winter months, and it can cause warpage. So one of the things I do is, if needed, I'll make my uh, bracing a little longer, even if it's not needed. Uh, sometimes I'll do that, especially if I'm going horizontally. Uh, I'll take that extra little measure of making sure that there's enough br bracage going from corner to corner or side to side. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's all up to the individual though. Uh, some people don't like to brace too much, but I tend to overdo it sometimes. If there's a lot of extra space in there and I got the material to do it, I always make sure I always have extra bracing because whenever I buy a kit, I don't throw anything away, I save it. So if, if any of my friends have a shortage of bracing material or anything like that, they can always call me and I can usually supply them with plenty, you know. Tim, do you brace horizontally as well as vertically on each wall? Yes, I do both, horizontal and vertical, yes. And uh, another thing I do when I'm bracing um, uh, horizontally, uh, I make sure that there's enough room uh on the sides so everything fits nice and neat together uh sometimes if you go too close uh you'll find that you'll have uh you'll overdo it towards the edge of one piece and you might have to uh redo that section again uh if you let it dry and then you come up short when you're putting it all together uh, I usually put everything together at the same time. Um, and um, what I mean by that is when I'm putting a building together, uh, I'll put it all together in the square, all right, or whatever the shape of the building is, and I'll let it dry that way. And then I'll put the roof on uh, and the windows will go in. All right, at the same time, um, usually right around that period of time. Now, I know uh, with bar mills, uh, Art Fahey, uh, 
usually has his kits right at the end where the windows go in. Uh, and that's kind of like for me where I like it. Uh, and I do that with Doug Foskill's windows too. I don't always follow the directions uh, the way the craftsmen design them. Because uh, a lot of times I like to put a lot of my own additions onto them, like the lighting and stuff like that. You'll notice with this building here, there's a, a an ornate gooseneck light right on the side of that. Uh, if you bring it in, you can see it right on the side where the soda machine is. And um, let's see if I have another one uh, that I can see. No, there's not another one in this picture. But anyways, uh, that's one of the things I, I really like to do. Um, and another thing is, uh, you'll see over to the far right where that crossing shanty is on the other side of the track you'll see another one of those Canadian uh, crossing signs. It's in the shape of a diamond. You'll see that there. And let me just stop the share real quick, just because I just realized, oh, hey, I have some pictures that I took of Tim's layout too. Oh, that's right, you did. Let me pull those up real quick and load them up so you guys can see them. Because, I, like I said, you have to, you'd almost have to be there to really take in the amount of detail that Tim has put on his layout. And like I said, he, the, the, Tim could put detail in just about anything. So let me Tim, while Dylan is playing with his computer, let me ask you a question. Sure. How do you know when a model is finished and it's time to start a new project? When I feel comfortable with it. When I say, this is nice. I like this. And I don't, I know I've heard people say that sometimes, well, maybe someone else might, might not like this or the way it looks or something like that. I usually have my own internal compass that I use. And I, and I look at it as if I think that is nice on my layout, then that's the way it's going to be. That's how I want it. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's the thing with having one long. You can cross air passages here. Anyhow, um, that's um, what I, what I, uh, how I gauge it. That was a good question, though. It's a good sorry. answer. That was a good question. I'm sorry I got a little fragmented there. No, no, no. It's a good answer too. I appreciate that very much. Okay. I I, I got a suggestion for you uh, on your uh, lamp or your goosenecks. Uh, Tish, Tishy makes uh, the uh, little domes uh, yeah. with with holes in them. And yep. I've made, you know, with the little tiny LEDs nowadays, made them up and they work, seem to work pretty good. A uh, little, probably a little more work than what the ready made ones are, but, uh, yep. but the tissue ones work out really nice. And I think they make them an O scale too. So if you want a little bigger one you yep. know, on, on a building, you could do that as well. Yeah. One, <laughs> one of the things for me, um, I, I like to do little innovative things like that. One of the things for me is um, I'm on a, not a super amount of medications, but I'm starting to develop some uh, Parkinson's like tremors and stuff. And um, I built a, this past week, I built a water tower, Bar Mills water tower. And uh, there's some threading you have to do with the, the cable uh, at the top of the water tower. And it took me forever to get that thing threaded through that eyelet. And it's small, but I ended up having to use a magnifying glass and bracing the magnifying glass so I could see the hole. So, I use a lot of magnifying glasses, believe me. <laughs> I think that's an aging thing for us. Right. 
<laughs> but uh, one of the things, like uh, with details and stuff like that, uh, Dylan's comes out when I need to have my wire in down down underneath um, my uh, layout. He uh, comes out and he gets under there for me. I showed him how to do wiring, and he's excellent at it. Now he can wire up just about anything, but I can't get underneath anymore. Um, so, uh, which, you know, uh, when I first started building my layout, I could. And I uh, always enjoyed uh, fooling around with the electronics of the layout and designing it, you know. Uh, but I, I just can't physically go under the, um, the layout anymore. What Which is control? Yeah, what controls here's, here's an example of a little tiny LED. Uh, let's see if I can get it up here where you can see it. Uh, probably not. Uh, here we go. Uh, probably won't be able to see it, but these are 402s, they call them. 402s. Yeah, and they're pre-wired. They're pretty bright, too, actually. These are a white one. Uh, but the next size up would be like, I think, a 602. Yeah, uh, but you can find most of them out on you know eBay, relatively yep. inexpensive, pre-wired. Uh, okay. I would I would never attempt to try to wire uh, solder one of these four o twos. It's like you can barely see the wires on them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't you know, know how they do it, but one of, one of the things I did, um, Walter still makes uh, a modern day era gooseneck. It's uh -huh. silver. It's silver. So what I did was I painted them. I just got them from uh, Charlie Rose. And they, uh, they're they silver, and I painted them green. And it didn't look too bad when I put it on the side of the buildings. Green, so green would they, be the appropriate color. Well, for back in those days, that's what they used. Black right. and green. So yeah. uh, I... Uh, Made a green, I, I made three of them actually green. And uh, we're gonna see how it goes once I get it up and lit, you know? So hopefully it, it comes out and it looks okay. If it doesn't, well, back to the drawing board. <laughs> exactly, right. But you know, um, I will look around because uh, I really do like the old lights, you know? And I not only use them on my buildings, but I use them on the big billboard signs as well. I don't know if Dylan has any pictures of those, uh, but because um, he took a whole bunch of pictures down there one day. So, and I, and I haven't really been showing my um, layout to the public yet. I was going to show it to uh, uh, a club, the Pioneer Valley Hobbyist Club last year. Uh, but something came up and I wasn't able to do the showing. Uh, and then we started having this pandemic. I was going to do it this past spring. And so, you know, I came down with COVID in early April. And uh, it's really taken me a, quite a while to get back on my feet. Um, so. Anyway, I do have some of the pictures that I, I managed to okay. find in my phone. Okay, good. So, let's put them back up. Wow. I, I can hear your jaws all hitting the floor now. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you can see some of the lights. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, this, like I was saying, this is basically uh, apply Tim's detailing to the whole layout. It, it, it's, it's amazing how much stuff that Tim has managed to get in there. Uh, but yeah, this is only one corner of it. But that building That's in it. the back, what do you guys that notice about that? I mean, I know what it is, but I want to see if anyone else picks up on it. Is that a car coming out of the left-hand side of the building? Uh, yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is? 
I see. Oh, you have a, a diamond in there, don't you? <laughs> Look at that. Yep. Tim, you, you would know more about that building than I do. I just remember when I first saw that, I went, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a Bar Mills kit. That's Michael Tylek's design, uh, Tylek tool. And um, I built that, uh, God, uh, about nine, ten years ago. And I uh, sent a photo of it to Art Fahey. And the only thing he did was he critiqued it. <laughs> And he ripped me a new one. He said, well, you forgot to put this in. You forgot to put that in. I said, all right, you got to give some license to your own creativity and design. You know, not everybody's going to build it exactly the way you want it built, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, that's a, that's a Tylek tool. And I pretty much built it around the uh, design uh, that they give you with the kit. I really enjoyed building that. Um, you can see that the awnings on the building, I spray painted those. I have this thing for green. Uh, in this also, this uh, signal tower here, you'll see that I've done some green with the windows. Um, let's see. And also I put in, uh, an overhead gooseneck light on this. And I think I put an internal light in that, in that building too. And I don't think it's on right now. That's beautiful modeling. Just beautiful. Well, thank you. Well, there's more than this. <laughs> Wait, there is more. If you buy uh, this, is, this is one of my babies. This is a this is a four six two Rutland. It's a um, Broadway Limited. Hi guys, uh, let me interject, inter interject for a second here. Who is who speaking? Uh, Tim. Who? My name is Tim. Tim. Hi Tim. Okay, I just got here late late into the game. I was wondering what's going on. Okay. Showing my layout. Mm -hmm. Looks nice. Well, thank you. Right. Tim, do you put your uh, buildings on uh, bases before you put them on the layout, or do you just put them straight on the layout? 50-50. Uh, um, I don't build in sections for dioramas or anything like that, like some folks. Um, I don't have uh, the creativity to do that <laughs> or the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -huh. said, you know, some people do that, you know, and uh, God love them, you know. <laughs> I, I admire that skill, but that's not me. Um, I uh, usually put mine directly onto the layout itself, but I have all the scenery done before I put it down uh, that I need for the format. And then I do all the additional detailing once the building is in place. Okay. Now, I put the lights in before everything, you know, the internal lights for the inside of the building. They go in before I put the building down. So is the building, now, are the buildings removable? Uh, yes, the majority of them are, not okay. all of them. There's a couple of my larger buildings that aren't um, movable. And the only reason why I did that was because I had track going through the middle of them, uh, separating them, and just in case the engine came off and hit the building itself, it wouldn't move the building plus the other building. I have a couple sections like that. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now you'll notice that not all of my buildings are wood. This one here is plastic. 
and um, I have both. I have uh, wood and uh, plastic. Uh, I make the plastic though look like wood. And there's a little trick to that. Um, I just use a lot. <laughs> I do a lot of inking on it. Um, I ink the plastic. I ink the windows, the roof, and um, I put a lot of uh, um, weathering powders into them. Which do you prefer, wood or plastic? Uh, wood, actually. Wood, but I, I know some people, they, they like both, you know. I know a guy that he, even though he uh, builds things with wood, uh, ships and stuff, he, he also has some plastic involved. And, um, you know, he likes that too, whatever. You know, uh, but I prefer uh, wood because uh, I uh, like working more with the Elmer's types of glues, the white and yellow glue glues versus uh, the other glue for putting models together, model glue. What are your What are your tips for turning the plastic to make it look like wood? Inking. Lots of ink. <laughs> What I do is I, when I'm doing a, a plastic model, I increase, I told you before, I keep the, for doing wood structures, it's a two to one ratio, but for when I'm doing a plastic, it's uh, usually a four to one ratio. When you weather, do you prefer, because I heard you talk about powders earlier. Yes. Do you prefer to use powder or that acrylic wash type stuff? I uh, prefer to use the powders. Um, you know who has a good powder? I don't know if they still have it. Uh, is uh, Bar Mills? They, they, I know Art had it about ten years ago, and I bought a couple of them from them. And um, Bob Tucker had a guy uh, who uh, worked for him, and he was in 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 scale, and uh, he uh, tried to get some weathering powders and and. A, Apparently, bar mills had run out, so I said, hey, I got a, a whole brand new one at home, so the next time I came over, uh, I brought it over and gave it to them. Um, but it had uh, black and uh, three different types of uh, reds uh, involved in it, and uh, I really like it. I still have it, and plus I bought others, too, from different companies. And I noticed you had a lot of insulators on your telephone poles. How did you make those? Um, well, they came with the poles. Okay. Yeah, they came with the poles. So you, just, um, you, just, you just had the right paint to make them look? Yeah, I, I did, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I looked at, well, I used to do antiquing years ago. <laughs> and... Uh, I noticed going into some of the older antique shops up in northern New Hampshire and stuff, you go into them and you'd see this colored glass and they were insulators uh, from the old days and a lot of them were green. And there were different colors of greens. Um, some of them were lighter green and some of them were darker. So I just decided to go along with that for the era, you know. I don't know if they're exactly correct uh, for between 1928 and 1942, but I took a shot at it and, and uh, that's how it came out. I don't think anybody will dispute it. Well, I hope not. <laughs> this uh, building over here on the uh, left, um, I just built this and put this into my layout. Um, it's uh, Babcock's Plumbing. And that uh, it's a bar mills kit. And uh, it's really nice. I really like it. Um, actually, there's two bar mills kits. That tower uh, behind Babcock's is uh, bar mills as well. Um, 
but I, I really like what Art Fahey has been doing lately and the things that he's been putting into his kits. Um, the detail stuff. So one thing I noticed about your layout is that you have a really good balance between track work and scenery. Oh, How thank do you, you. You're welcome. It, it's, it's very nice. It, it, it looks like it could be good for operations and as a, a depiction of a place. So yeah, it, it, it is actually. It, it is easy to run um, trains on my layout. Um, I got a, a, a friend coming uh, in a few weeks. His name's Bill Johnson. And he's going to, uh, for some reason, my DCC is, I just haven't been having luck with my switches and stuff. And uh, I've got some shorts going on. And I can't get under there. Like I said earlier, I can't get underneath my layout. So Phil's going to come and he's going to work on my switches for me and correct the problems with the DCC so that everything's okay. running smoothly again, you know. Somehow I, I got a short under there and he's going to troubleshoot it and find it for me. Uh, this is something, though, that just started up last year. Um, so we'll, we'll find out what it is. This guy's pretty good at correcting issues like that. Gotcha. I, I guess my question is, when you designed your layout, how did you envision the track plan? I mean, was it... it I wasn't here earlier. I, I kind of hopped on a little bit ago. Yeah. So is it based off of the prototype or how it looks like Rutland? Well, you know, um, there's a gentleman by the name of Dick Elwell. Uh, he has the Husik Railroad. Uh, he's been pretty well published in different craftsman magazines, uh, Model Railroader. He's been featured in a few times and he's got a couple videos. Uh, but I, I got a lot of ideas from um, Dick when I went to see his layout a couple times, you know, how he used uh, the mediums that he had at hand, uh, the trees, the gravel, uh, all the ballasting work with the track, uh, where he had the lighter ballasts along with the darker ballast. Uh, and I try to integrate that. Uh, for where where I have it on my layout, you know, I use darker ballast where I have a lot of traffic, and then I have a lighter ballast where I don't have a lot of traffic. Um, you know, I used a lot of rust over along my ice house and stuff because I heard back in the old days when they would be loading up the refrigerator cars with ice, uh, they would leak out rust from the inside uh, of the refrigerator cars where they would put the ice blocks. Uh, they would start to rust on the inside and of course that would drip out onto the ground as it melted. And so it'd be a rust color. So I made uh, sure that I put a lot of extra rust color along the siding where I have the ice house, uh, my icing operation. What do you use for the backdrop? Um, the backdrop I got from a gentleman down in Pennsylvania. Uh, the combination of, of the backdrop itself was, uh, I had to cut it out, of course, uh, but they were uh, long sheets of scenery, and then I would just cut it out with an X-Acto knife so that it would be the exact, and then the white clouds and everything like that, that you see, uh, my friend Gary LaCroix painted my walls. He's an artist and he painted the clouds and everything uh, on my layout. And Ga Gary, he's an HO modeler as well. And uh, he, he's got a real good sense of depth and everything like that. So uh, when he was putting up the clouds, he would say, okay, Tim, what do you think? You're, we're gonna have this over here. And we had a, a sample cutout and we would put it 
down and we would be able to gauge the depth uh, down to the hills and stuff. So you'll see in the background behind that tower, you'll see a formation of clouds going down along the hill. It, it looks like they're coming out of the hill off in the distance. I was here earlier. Uh, what size is your layout? It's uh, 12 by 12. Oh. All right, let me just move on to the next picture. I see. Oh, wait, we've already seen these. So let me get out of this. All right. So that is the pictures I have on Tim's layout right now. Obviously, if others magically appear, we can pull them up. But like I like I said, and I said this once, I'll say it again. Tim is very good at putting detail into a scene. Of course, with all the lighting, we're starting to run out of room for wires. But we'll figure that out too. If we have to run more buses, we'll run more buses. I don't care. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll put we'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> I think I think there's only room for one more bus line all the way around. I I think there's only one more. Because we've we've got three in there right now. <laughs> I think I think I can only go with one. So do you have three twelve volt bus lines for the lighting? Is that how it works? Uh no. I only have a twelve volt for the track. Um the others are primarily uh twenty, twenty two I think it is. So are you using uh, LEDs in your building or regular lights? Uh, LEDs. No, they're definitely much cooler for sure. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. As well as my street lights too. Um, all my street lights are the Wal Walther Scenic Masters, um, and they work pr pretty good. I haven't had any burnout yet. One thing, though, I have found where they solder the connectors together with the wires. Um, I did have a batch of uh, lights that came through, and the wires were just pulling off. Uh, I think even Dylan had one come off in his hand when uh, the last time he was here. I think one came off. Didn't it, Dylan? Yeah, it did. It was kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, it, and it's... It, doesn't really take much of a tug so I think it was a bad batch because that was the first time I've ever had that happen and I've put in an awful lot of lights I mean we did have one light catch fire but <laughs> that was a fluke that was a fluke too so yeah yeah that was a little weird <laughs> I just remember I'm under the layout all of a sudden I'm like is something burning I look up there's the fl there's a the little sh thing of flame I'm like shut it off <laughs> Yeah, that was we had two live wires that day. Oh, uh, it was that was something else. I just remember that, and that that's one of those moments I'll just treasure just because of the the silliness of it. Because <laughs> it that that was silly. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure we've all had that moment where we we just have that something goes spectacularly wrong. That and, and it's not supposed to. This is a light just catching fire once you put power to it. To me, is just the definition of what the hell just happened. <laughs> and, and it's and I think part of it is just the, the silliness of it happening is what makes it where I where I cherish that memory so much. Yeah. Well, I got a I I didn't mention this before, but I had a section of track on the siding that pot. And uh, Gary and I one day tried to figure out why it popped. And I don't know, I still haven't figured it out, but it popped and it separated. And I can't really run an engine completely over that section now. Uh, I tried to repair it. Uh, we even tried to place extra rail in there to make a smoother connection, but uh, it just wasn't gonna be that day, so. We'll figure it out someday up the road. 
one of those things. But yeah, you, you, things that you don't expect can happen, you know. And you got to kind of be prepared, prepared for it. Or you got to be able to improvise, you know, be creative enough to improvise. And um, that's what I've tried to do with some of my stuff. If I run out of material and I want to get it done, then I'll look around and see if there's something else I can replace it with, you know. And also, one of the things I like to do is I like to help out people coming into the hobby, um, especially young people. And, you know, it, our hobby can be expensive, uh, especially when you get up into the higher scales like the O and the S stages and stuff. Uh, at today's prices, you got to have a chunk of change to buy some of those old scale cars. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids don't have that kind of money and stuff. So one of the things I try to do is I try to, you know, give uh, people, you know, extra buildings that I have or anything like that, stuff that I know I'm not going to be ever using again, you know. Uh, same as magazines and stuff. I've given a lot of uh, magazines to younger people, you know, that it'll stimulate their creativity, their minds uh, to maybe think about uh, wanting to have a layout or a hobby uh, such as model railroading, you know, uh, because we are, you know, the older we get, uh, there's less people coming in behind us who have an interest in this hobby, you know. So I try to stimulate it as much as possible. Tim, how did you learn your modeling ability? Did you have a mentor along the way, or is this true? Oh, yeah. George, George Salios. George Salios. <laughs> my friend Dan Bigda. Uh, my friend Dan Bigda, uh, he uh, builds. And uh, I've watched Dan uh, doing his projects uh, firsthand, and I'm highly impressed. Uh, actually, he's. Uh, I'm going to start building my own instead of just kits. I'm going to be starting my own buildings. I've never done it, uh, but I'm in the process of uh, getting ready to do it. I have the time on my hands. I'm retired, and uh, it's one of my my uh, goals. Now, you know, you, you say there's not as many people coming into the hobby as there used to be. Yeah, that's what, what I'm I what, what What I see is even the people coming into the hobby are not model builders like they used to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff out there that's pre-made now. Uh, there's a company, I see it every month when I get my model railroader. Uh, that's advertising the, the buildings are already pre-made and lit as well. The only thing they got to do is put it on the uh, layout, drill a hole down through, and then plug it in. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. I think a lot of that has to do with when you grew up, too. I mean, I grew up in the 50s, and, of course, everybody was building in the 50s back then. Yeah. All this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that was a big one for uh, HO. Yeah. So I mean, people yeah. like Jack Work and other and some of those other guys like that back there were like you know heroes for me. Uh, yeah. I, I that's that's my favorite side of the hobby is the actual building part, part of things. I not so much yeah. interested in running trains or anything like this, but I am interested in building trains, yeah. structures, anything. You know. Yeah, it's therapeutic for me. It's same same here, and yeah. I think the younger generation, everything's just coming as fast as they can. You know, you just go down to your hobby shop. Well what's left of hobby shops, <laughs> could have a hobby shop, buy it off the shelf and next week buy another one. You yeah. Know, not have the experience of, hey, I made this, you know. And I think it's Well, easy. different people do have different interests. And I seem to remember back in the 60s that everybody was decrying how, oh, styrene's going to be the ruin of model building. Nobody builds in the wood anymore. So it changes, but yeah, I understand we still that. keep going on. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that increases accessibility? Yeah, back in the fifties, on sixties, everything was in plastic. And uh, God, I remember sitting at our dining room table with a newspaper down on top of the table and building a model mm -hmm. and sniffing in all that glue. And God, I would have the worst headache that night when I went to bed. 
and I couldn't figure out for the life of me why, you know? I'm talking about one of those door knocker headaches, you know? Oh, God. Why am I feeling this way? I remember the articles like, you know, uh, Al Armitage did in the model river, like case for sirene and talk about yep. using acrylic paints and all this stuff like this. And everything oh, yeah. crazy and look at us today. <laughs> yep. Bill and I had an adventure the other day. We, we both went to a, an old uh, small Southern Railroad Depot in Lee County, North Carolina. He's going to scratch build it in O scale. I'll be scratching building it at HR scale. The same. Oh, way. now it's in stone, Jack. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How do you throw us under the bus? <laughs> anyway, you know, it's a really cool little building. It's it's kind of a very unique shape and design, and and it was a little freight station uh, agent state uh, office uh, in the middle of nowhere by some brick by old brick plants that used to be down in uh, Sanford area. I think I can bring a picture up here if I can do a share screen. Mm -hmm. sure. Make sure you can, and yep, you can share it. Okay, hang on a second here. Dylan, I like that background behind you. Yeah, the the wonders of a of technology, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's, it's really better like than just that. looking at the background of junk. <laughs> Let's see if I can find well, it's a nice background. Yeah, it's my logo. I I, I would hope it works. Know what I mean? Well, it does. It does. Yeah, it looks good. I'm surprised Dan didn't join us tonight. Yeah, if he's not around, he's not around. It is what it is. <laughs> I think I mentioned to him the other day I was going to be uh, presenting here tonight. I really like doing this, so this has been really nice. Uh, I'd like to do it again if I can. Absolutely. Uh, I'm upstairs. I'm not down in my room, but what I'd like to do is video tape my layout for you guys um, and let you see what I have been doing over the last month or so uh, with the lighting and stuff because uh, Dylan was out here a few weeks ago. And uh, we we did quite a few pieces, but now I got just as many pieces as what we did a couple of weeks ago uh, <laughs> that are getting ready to be uh, done. Um, so, Tim, when you have an operating session, uh, how many people does it take to operate your layout? Well, actually, I haven't had an operating session yet. Um, I'm not really set up for that. Well, your layout looks so beautiful. I, I think everybody here tonight would love to be able to have a chance to operate on it. Well, I, I would let people do that. Um, one of the things I do do for people who have DCC, I have uh, a separate programming track to specifically do DCC. And I let people bring their engines over and, and I'll program them for them whatever way they want. I have a, my DCC is NEC. And um, it's, it's one of the better ones, I think, as far as uh, being out there. Uh, I've looked at a few of them. But for me, uh, that's the best one. Uh, Dylan, I've got this. I've got the building here. If I can figure out to do a share screen on it. Well, it's just uh, if you go to the bottom of the screen, you the should have thing. a menu pop up, and there should be a button that just says share screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me see. Share screen desktop. See that didn't. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. Nice. Nice. Real nice. That's a, that's a painting from a Georgia, Florida railroad here. Here's the structure. I get to open up. Hmm. That looks like you had Gary LaCroix there doing the artistry. Wow. That's what Gary does. 
Mm. Anyway, that's, that's the little building. It's really a little tiny little thing. Oh, that's nice. What is it again? Pardon me? What kind of building is it? It was a freight uh, agent's office. Oh. Just a little that's tiny, nice. like one little room in there. That's it. That, that almost looks like a uh, gas station that we had up here in town uh, back, you know, it was dated back to the 40s. They, I think they finally tore it down, but it was about like that size. Uh, I think it even had the pillars out front. <laughs> Just wow. on the wall. The old NS tracks are sitting next to it. I think it's NS or CSX or Jack knows more than I do. As far as have you, have you built it as a model? Not yet. We just measured it uh, uh, Thursday, Wednesday. Uh, I said Jack's going to build it in HO and I'm going to build it in no scale. It's it's a neat all the bricks. Pardon me? It's a neat looking little structure. Yeah, yeah. I, I really liked it. I, I, I saw it a while back and then Jack mentioned this. I went, oh, yeah, let's do that, you know, type of thing. So we did a lot of measuring on it and stuff. And so we're going to figure it all out and build it. And I'll probably do an article for O scale trains on it. And bar mills bar mills has one that's almost like that but they call it the freight house at cranberry yard mm -hmm. have you seen that it's no it, except it doesn't have the pillars in the front of it but it's it's set up designed like that small is and it, it's a freight house. does it actually take freight uh yeah actually no. you can it has, a, it has a ramp out there in the front this now could, this no. could it could have been over to the side. Yeah, th this could only has one door in the front just for the guy to enter. There's no there's no freight in it. There's no nothing. It's just an office. Okay. Yeah. What's the you what's have the, a, what, you, you didn't what have a the, shed over to the side with a ramp or anything like that to store freight in? No. No, no, no. no. Nothing no. at all like that. What would you say, Jim? What's the roof made? But I can't tell. Is it shingles or really crappy shingles? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I have to weather it like that too. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I love weathering things, so that's kind of my forte. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's that. You go build it brick by brick. No, I'm I'm not. Uh, there's a guy named Robbins who, with no scale, built a power plant brick by brick. I'm not quite that insane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to a guy's house one time, and I, I mentioned this one of the other meetings we had here, and he had this beautiful O-scale bridge. It was about, I don't know, three and a half feet long, steel uh, through bridge, and he was real proud of the fact that there's 15,000 individual rivets on it. Wow. And I'm like, you know, he could have just made little castings of each one of those pieces, and nobody would have known the difference. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not quite that crazy to do uh, little bricks and and all that kind of stuff. Brick sheet is fine. <laughs> okay, so get out of this thing. Wow, well, I just looked up the uh, the office at Cranberry Yard, uh, and uh, yeah, there's no resemblance. <laughs> But I have one office, they call it the yard office. Um, I just built that um, a couple weeks ago. And then they have a freight house. They have a separate freight house. Um, they have a... Uh, a signal tower at um, Cranberry Yard, and they have a water tower at Cranberry Yard. So there's quite a bit focusing on Cranberry Yard that Art's been doing. Is that a real location or is that just a model location? I think it's just a model location. Mm -hmm. I never asked them, but I kind of like it, the idea of Cranberry Yard. So mm -hmm. I bought a few items that were Cranberry Yard. Mm -hmm. It's kind, of, kind of like the sawmill complex that uh, 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 what is it? B, B I'm not sure the guy's the guy built built something or other uh, models makes and he's all laser cut and he's been building this thing for years and gave it a, a makeup name and stuff and and producing kits out of it. 
Um, it's not a real location. Or is it based on one? Well, hey guys, I, I got to head out. Uh, it's been great. Thanks, Tim, for showing your layout. Uh, thanks for thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, see everybody Wednesday. Not sure what's on Wednesday's schedule, but let me uh, let me make one other statement here before you leave, if you don't okay. mind. I announced right when we started this meeting that we're trying to do something new. And if you'll go on the chat uh, for this uh, Zoom meeting and tell us your name, the scale that you model in, and leave us your email address, then we're going to start sending you emails for each one of the upcoming meetings so you don't have to worry about when they are and find the links and so forth. And, and, if you, and who, will be, uh, who will be presenting? Uh, for what date? Whatever. I'm just saying. The next one coming up is uh, a great modeler. His name is Robert Simmons. He'll be presenting Saturday the 22nd. So is this on the chat part of, of this here or on your, uh, where's, where's the chat at? Uh, right here. Uh, Dylan, can you tell them how to get yeah, there? Next to the share screen. Oh, I, see the chat. I see the chat right here. Okay, and so if oh, you'll just... It. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I, I, put, uh, I put my email in there, Jim, and uh, everything else, so... Well, that's great. I really do appreciate it. And for... Well, some, someday I hope to have mine published, if I can get it published before I die. Uh, I whether it's in... Uh, whether it's a model railroad or, or you know whatever you know have Lou Sassy come up and take some pictures of it or something you know, but um, you did that wrong. <laughs> that was been that's been one of my things I've been thinking about doing having it published. I think that's I think that's wonderful. Obviously, it should be. Oh, thank you. And Lou Sassy. Well, if you know anybody out there that's in the business of publishing, let them know. What you saw. Well, I'll tell you, I don't publish for Model Railroad. I write my articles for two online publications, uh, S-Scale Resource and O-Scale Resource. Yeah. And, I, and I write about modelers in all scales. Uh, and I'd love to uh, do a profile on you, and I'd love to include you and your railroad in one of my articles. Sure. Be so if you'd be cool. interested in that, uh, Tim, if you would, yep. if you... Uh, if you can get my email from Dylan, Dylan, okay. if you can share it with him or somehow, uh, okay. and, and Tim, if you'll just send me an email to that address, yep. then then I'll I'll send you the information and, and we'll go from there. But I'd love oh, to uh, I'd love to do that for you. Okay, good. I'd like that. I'd like to have my uh, layout published at some point. Well, and, yeah. and I think. I think it's important for people to know who you are. It's not just yeah. your life. It's the it's the person. And what I'm what I'm sensing and what I feel is it's just important for us to know the people as well as to see their layout. Yeah. And if we put those two things together, it, it has a different perspective than just seeing uh, seeing the layout by itself. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. See everybody next week. Yes, sir. Next Wednesday. Nice Robert, you. Robert. Right, Jim, it was a nice layout. I love seeing it. Jim, thanks okay, again. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, thank, you, thank you all much. for coming. I really do it was, appreciate it and, and hope you learned something tonight that can help you in your modeling. And uh, please tell your friends about us. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Tim. And, and I'll look, okay. be looking forward to getting your email. Okay.